minutes and we'll go from there. If this is enough reason to get sober, I don't know what is. So what's it like, Dad? That was very hard, just watching that, I've got to say. That was really hard. I, I could write a book on my experiences with Sunny in rehabs. You know, she's been to a lot of rehabs from a very young age. And uh, I wouldn't say I was, I'm, I'm hopeless, I'm sober too, so I know there's always hope. But, you know, I've seen a lot of people relapse over the years and not make it back. And um, I've been praying for Sunny, you know, every time she gets in somewhere, let's pray this is the one, you know, this is the one where she can break through. And she seems different. She really does. I mean, th there was always a reluctance with her before to completely surrender, I think, you know. And it's hard for young people, man, you know. It's really hard, you know. You see all their, all their friends in uh, you know, smoking pot and drinking, and to have that shut down at such an early age, you know, but she started young, so she kind of got a good run, you know. That's <laughs> good, yeah. So you're in sobriety as well, or in recovery? I am, yeah. And how long do you have? I have about 20 months. Wonderful. Yeah. Has it been good having your daughter going on the same path as you? It has been good, yeah. Although it's the hiccups, you know. I mean, I was, I was sober for a quite a long period of time before, then I went out for like eight years, and that was quite a horrendous experience. And yeah. during that experience, you know, it was, we were sort of running parallel lives, and then Sonny got sober before me, and then I got sober, and then we were sober together for about nine months, and it was absolutely fantastic. So you used together, you got sober together, and here you are in, in each other's lives and up here willing to do whatever you can to help Yeah, well, people. hopefully we'll put the fun back in dysfunctional this time, you know? You know, <laughs> right? But I mean, hey, it is what it is. And, yeah. and there are other people that are having the same experiences that need to hear this story. There, there are miracles every day in, in recovery, you know? Well, there's definitely a miracle right here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Alcohol, methamphetamines, heroin. There are many ways to get addicted. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to start recovery. Call the Intervention and Treatment Referral now, offered by Spencer Recovery Centers. I have Curtis up here right now. Curtis uh, is someone who has two years of sobriety and has really done a lot to make that transition in his life. And I think it's important to go over where he's at in his sobriety right now. So how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good today. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. So two years. Uh, Christmas Day is my sober date, 2007, so a little over two years. You got sober on Christmas. I had a relapse on Christmas Eve. but What uh, happened on Christmas Eve? I was smoking pot and poppers and um, actually driving down to a friend's family. And I was actually um, just visiting on my way to see my mom and dad in El Centro. And um, I had kids around me. And I always had wanted to have kids. I always wanted to be a father. And it uh, just never happened. But uh, this shame and guilt came over me. And uh, I just, I, I, I was felt paralyzed. I couldn't leave the, the house. I couldn't leave my friend's family's house. And uh, I remember the first person I called was my sponsor. And uh, he, he talked me through it. Like I was, I was driving and he said, you know, halt. You know, he taught me halt, which is hunger, angry, lonely, and tired. And that got me through the mountains. I had a two hour drive to get to my mom and dad. And uh, I never wanted to feel that way again. I always remember the, how, I relapsed because that keeps me sober today, is uh, remembering how I felt around those kids and how I, uh, I didn't want to ever feel that way again. So um, it's been an amazing journey so far. The holidays are hard. You know, it's like uh, when you get to that point where you're so addicted to the drugs or the lifestyle and you have to go back to this so-called normal life with your family and act and show them that you're okay and that you're not, you know, you're not trying to scare them in any way. What was it like this Christmas? Well, this Christmas is a little different. Um, my dad had given me a cake for, for my one year, um, and that was a gift of this, the program. And uh, this past year, my dad passed, actually, on October 5th, and uh, I was just grateful that I at least got him to see me sober, at least for a year. So um, my second year was just, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of work I had to do, a lot of character defects that came up that I had to douse and work on myself and get into action and suit up and show up. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I've invested so much into this you know, um, this journey, uh, the friends, the real friends, true friends I feel I have now. Um, I actually went to school my second year. I just graduated uh, as a drug and alcohol counselor. I uh, got my diploma, and I never would have thought, you know, but um, I'm also a bartender at two nightclubs. A lot of the bartenders I 
I drink with actually need a, a program, and I'm, it's nice to be there just so they know I'm, you know, I'm there. I'm not, you know, promoting it. I'm, a you know, it's more of attraction, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah. So they see you. Uh, you're working. You're bartending. They see you. You know, you're you're open with how you're sober, and they're coming to you for advice, and you're seeing them, and you can like see them going down the same road that you were going down. Yeah, I've had a two bartenders actually come up to me, and they're like, Curtis, I, I, need, to, I need to stop drinking. And I don't think they're willing yet, but I know they, they're trying towards it, and uh, I think it just takes time. You figure you get, you get sober, you go through all this, and it wasn't easy, but then you're there at a bar, at a, working at a bar, and someone comes to you and asks you, just because they're attracted to the fact that you are sober, they ask you for advice, and at that point, if you're able to help one person like that, then the whole thing was, you know, for a good cause. Just one person, you know, and that makes my day. Totally. You know? So, uh, can we just back up a little bit on, uh, you know, how bad did it get for you? Uh, the main thing for me, I mean, I had little small bottoms, like, um, I mean, I was go-go dancing on a, on a float, and um, all the bartenders were um, on the float uh, in San Diego for Pride, and... Uh, uh, midday, I fell off the float, and it was an asphalt, you know, off the flatbed truck. Is it truck. on YouTube? What's that? Is it on YouTube? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Um, but I broke my butt, and literally that was my bottom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I ha also had a spiritual bottom as well, you know, and um, I came to a point where I'm having intrusive thoughts that was driving me insane, and uh, that really is what got me to... Um, into the program. So what are you doing today now? You said you're a counselor. Where do you a work? A counselor. Um, I'm working with Chris Spencer and Spencer Co Recovery. And then, uh, you know, that's just the first step for me. You know, just being passionate about it and wanting to help other people. You get to see a lot of great transitions. You know, even like this, a grandma came in, she was 80 years old and she just realized she was uh, an alcoholic. You know, she had a DUI and she was amazing. You know, just stuff like that. Um, it's amazing to me. That's great. I think I was behind her yesterday on the freeway. <laughs> now, you know, in all seriousness, I mean, look at how full your life is, and the fact that you came up here to help other people is just amazing. <laughs> the next person that we have is Greg. Greg also was on our last show. He uh, was struggling around the holidays. He wanted to end his life, and you could see the hopelessness that he had in his eyes, but the willingness that he had to do whatever it takes to uh, turn his life around. And I think that uh, Jordan touched on this. Yes, you, you go into a facility, you accept treatment, but it's not about them giving you it. It's about what you can do with, with what's in front of you. You know, it, it, he chose to utilize everything, and you can tell he's using it to his fullest. Alcohol, methamphetamines, heroin. There are many ways to get addicted. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to start recovery. Call the Intervention and Treatment Referral now, offered by Spencer Recovery Centers. We have someone in the audience here named Greg. <laughs> My disease took me, you know, um, to the dark place where um, I was hiding it. You know, I was drinking very heavily. And on uh, December 20th, I, you know, tried to end it all. And that didn't work, and I ended up in a psych hospital um, for Christmas. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Are you willing to go to treatment? I'm willing because, like you said, uh, I, want a, I want a much better Christmas. Yes, I'm ready to go. <laughs> A lot's changed between now and December 20th. A lot has changed, yes. I want my life back, and I have my life back, you know. So there's hope, and there's, uh, there's actually um, a reason to live, you know. So um, I'm very thankful for all the stuff that I, that's been given to me, you know. Uh, I know I have some more to do, but uh, I've started that journey, and each step that I take is amazing, and uh, I'm very happy. When you were uh, talking about uh, wanting to end your life, I mean, can you talk a little bit about what it was like at that point when 